Oh yeah, it's the weekend, and you know what that means. It's time for Pixels and Bits on TheOverShield.com with your hosts, Corey, Manny, and Tommy. And now, broadcasting from planet Earth, it's time for Pixels and Bits. On the Rochelle.com. My name is Corey. Hi, welcome to episode 61 of Pixels and Bits. I am your host as always, Corey, and today I'm joined by my co host, Manny. Hey guys, what's up? That was a little light, Manny. Uh, Andrew <laughs> and Tommy are not here because I'm going to take a theory. I'm just going to take a guess at this. I think Tommy says he's with his girlfriend, but I think he's doing some debauchery. Hmm. hmm, either that or something that deals with uh, Hunger Games, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both, I don't know. Maybe Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> so then what's Andrew's excuse? He says he's too tired, to which I told him, I do not I do not, not pay you to, to just sleep around. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, yeah, we're, we're, we're Tommy and Andrewless, uh, which is great because now... The audience will now know who's speaking and know that it's Manny and not go, is it Manny or Andrew who's speaking? I can't wrap my brain around it. <laughs> or Andrew Shadow. Which one? It's uh it's it's Mandrew. I'll oh. bet you both. <laughs> yeah. That's terrible. Uh, or or uh, well no, it could be a lot worse. A- uh Andrew, Manny, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are little Annie. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump into the news desk. Hit the music. <laughs> All right. So, little couple of PSAs here. First off, if you have a Kickstarter account, go change your password because the because Kickstarter.com was just hacked. Surprise! Yay! <laughs> like I, that was going to happen eventually. Yeah. Second. Microsoft is having a ultimate 360 game sale right now. Um, and this is going on t- through to February 25th. Here's what's on sale. Portal 2 is 67% off. Asura's Wrath, 81% off. Dirt 3, 80% off. I highly recommend picking those two up. Uh, Batman Markham City is also 75% off. Alton Wake's American Nightmare, 70% off. So... I always think there's already like $15, so you're get, literally getting that game for like $3. That's a good game, too. Uh, Dustin Elysian Tales, 80% off, so that's like $2. That's pretty good right there. And every day they'll have different specials. So, um, and if you have an Xbox One, um, Rise is 33% off. Yay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I have like... The only game I cared about in that entire lineup is Forza, and like the petrol head is, and and in my head is wanting to murder the gamer in me for picking up a PS4. Oh yeah. Because well, but then again, the petrol head in me also wants to have a full blown racing cockpit while wearing a driver's suit while driving and whatnot, and being total serious about it, which would be a little weird. Anyways, next little PSA. Uh, Earnings from the entire game industry were just reported by the MPD, and U.S. alone generated fifteen billion dollars just through video games and consoles. That's mm. not including mobile. This is just the console market. Now I don't think it's even counting really handhelds either. So that's pretty significant. So to those who say that um, consoles are going to die. Um, get your head out of your ass. <laughs> now we got uh, some new announcements for games, products, whatever. Uh, first is from Microsoft, and that is that the Xbox One is getting a media remote. Was it the whole point of the Xbox One to that the remote was your voice? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I, where I, that I don't went. know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, next, Square Enix has announced a new Hitman game. 
and it's a turn-based <laughs> mobile game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> it's called Hitman Go. God damn. Oh. <laughs> Way to take a dump, Square. <laughs> this is just like... Wow, after how good Absol Hitman Absolution was, and then this, this is... Wow, way to treat your franchise. Now next, this isn't really gaming news, but if you're a Star Wars fan, and you liked the uh, the animated series The Clone Wars, and were a little bit bummed that, um, well, basically the last season never got aired. Well... Um, on March 7th, they're going to air the final episodes of The Clone Wars on Netflix. Mm, nowhere else? Nowhere else. So everybody go whip out your credit cards and join at the service that everybody's not even <laughs> using. Yeah, really. I'll I'm, just I'm, wait I'm out. I've seriously been surprised by more people. Like, where I work, I literally sit at a computer screen for hours, and I'm literally like... Like the only person there that has a Netflix account, and I'm just—it's weird. I'm, I think I'm more <laughs> surprised with the number of people I come across that don't have a Netflix account, or even so, the people who never even ha tried Netflix. It's oh yeah, I don't know. Like it's just one of those things where like I feel like it's been around for so long that it's kind of like Facebook is like everybody uses it. Mm. I don't know. For me, it's almost like it's the old myspace because you know when it came out everyone was on it and then facebook came out and then people realized you know they were either features that weren't there or in the case of netflix you're just they upped the price ridiculously Actually, so it's like well, no i mean yeah they upped it from uh, like a couple bucks but it's not that bad and they were gonna hike it even further but then offer game service as well to compete with gamefly which i would have been totally happy with because i really i personally am i've had gamefly three different times and, um, well, let's just put it this way. This nearest shipping center to me is all the way in Dallas. Or is it Houston? Oh, yeah. And so, because of that, it takes a week for me to get games. Hmm. So, it, whereas Netflix, shipping center, St. Louis, next day. Mm hmm I don't know. Now, we got a new game announcement, and it's called Chroma. It's a first-person shooter, but... You'll never guess who's actually making it. Hmm, do tell. Harmonix, the maker, the creators of Guitar Hero and Rock Band. What? <laughs> <laughs> it is a, I, I, here's what it is. Chroma is a music-driven first-person shooter. It uses your music as your weapon to battle your enemies Altered the terrain and feature a variety of classes, and it'll be free to play on PC. Oh wow, I'm looking at it right now. It's pretty trippy. Yeah, imagine taking an acid trip and playing that. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be you'd be happier. You'd be a lot happier. <laughs> now, uh, next game announcement we have is The Evil Within. It has a release date. I'm actually excited. To for Evil Within, even though I hate playing horror games. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, like, I sort of wish there was more horror games, and I sort of enjoy them, but I, I, like, I don't know, like, the little kid comes out in me and is just like, no, I don't want to cover my ears and shit. <laughs> <laughs> now this I have to see in person. Oh, you know, we'll, we'll do an Outlast stream someday. <laughs> yeah. But The Evil Within comes out on August 26th, 26th, for PS3, Xbox 360, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And it'll come out three days later in Europe. And since this is made by the guy who essentially created survival horror, it's going to be scary. It's going <laughs> to be very scary. Now, the biggest uh, game announcement of this, year, of this week wasn't that not only did Wolfenstein New Order get an official release date, which is actually May 20th, but that's Bethesda just confirmed that there is going to be a next gen Doom. Ooh. Because when you pre order Wolfenstein, you get access to the Doom beta. And that's all we know. Oh, this could be a good or bad thing, Corey. Here's the thing I want a new Doom, but I'm not sure if I want a Doom without John Carmack. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I mean, but Wolfenstein, the New Order, I'm looking forward to that because I, I get to kill Nazis again. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I want a new Wolfenstein, too, but I don't want a glitchy Skyrim part two <laughs> in the form of, like, zombies and Nazis. I'm just picking up our PS4. Everybody's putting that on their priority list. Because <laughs> Xbox One's the new PS3. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I'm not. I, 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 if you think I'm taking a jab here at Xbox, yes, I am, but it's true. PS4 right now is outselling it, and I, from what I've seen, people just kind of prefer it. I've seen way too many people up on Facebook be like, basically get pissed about their Xbox One. Mm. Didn't you say you were considering of purchasing one though, Corey? Yes, I am actually. Um, yeah. I th I'm gonna. I'm th wanting to get one before SGC. Uh, I, th I and if you're wondering what sold me, uh, Titanfall, of course, because uh, I'd rather play it on the best version than my 360 or whatnot. But also Forza and Sunset Overdrive a little bit. There you go. I don't know. I. I well, that and like, I love Gears. I love Halo. I really love Halo. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't tell, Corey, the overshoot. <laughs> I mean, if you couldn't tell, like, if you like walk into my room, it's like, oh, all the Halo games. Oh, almost all the books. And like, oh, there's there's some Halo figurines. Yeah. Oh, there's a pl oh, look, a plasma pistol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally don't like Halo. <laughs> um. Now, moving on to next story. We, earlier last year, we talked about uh, Atlas and how their parent company went under and whatnot. And now we later found out that Sega bought up Atlas. But Sega wouldn't say what they're doing with Atlas. Uh, we now know. Uh, Sega has announced that the uh, basically Atlas will become its own fully functioning company. It will not become a subsidiary. I'm sorry, not a subsidiary. Basic, uh, a internal developer in Sega. It won't. It won't turn into that. They'll basically just stay the way they are. Oh, which is great. Sega, which is really great. Yeah. Now, I, I here's the thing. I want some of those Sega guys to go work at Capcom and fix that shit. <laughs> I don't know. Sega seems to be turning around. It's, I, they've definitely turned around Sonic, at least recently. That's <laughs> and that's uh, to me surprising because back in '08, I proclaimed on Facebook, and I think you can find it. If you keep digging far enough in the timeline, I proclaim Sonic is dead. <laughs> oh. And I predicted he would die. And look, he's he's fine. Yeah, Knuckles got juiced. <laughs> oh my! He, like it's like we said last week, Knuckles skipped leg day. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, moving on, we're gonna talk about Titanfall. I uh, and I, since I'm be probably the only one here who's even played Titanfall. I have to say, it's awesome. <laughs> it's really, oh, it's, really? It sold me. It completely sold so me. So did you get that fixed? You, the whole frame rate issue and all that? Well, okay. I was able to get the frame rate up to 24. Okay. On my, on my laptop. And here's the thing. My laptop runs it shit. It runs it absolute shitty, like frame rate, low res textures and everything. The desktop I was using, which technically belongs to my my brother but i tried it out on there well because of a, a a little technical issue i could only play matches for about 10 to 15 minutes and then i well the system lost power oh wow the uh yeah the uh, <laughs> uh the power supply is going out and whenever the gpu pulls too much uh the power supply um shuts itself down Oh no! So uh, I need to get a new power supply for that. But because of that, I couldn't get capture any footage of it, and it just kills me because I really wanted to, and everything. But I'm gonna say this: uh, Titanfall. I scratched only the surface of it. I and I could tell like there was a lot of things that they were holding back that they wouldn't let you do and stuff like that. Um, so I could tell they were holding back a lot of stuff, but from what I played, it was just that alone was fun enough in itself. If they just sold just that, it was like the two maps and just a little bit for a $15 game. Hell, that would have been a great buy because 
um, people saying, oh, it's just Call of Duty. Well, yeah, it's like Call of Duty, but then you also had the fact that it's 6v6, and then there's uh, there's mechs, and then you got parkour and jetpacks, and yeah, um, and burn cards, which the burn card system is really cool. It's like perks, but temporary. You line up a bunch of perks in your card slot, or whatever, called burn card slots, and before you, uh, when you spawn, Right before you spawn, you can. The system will ask you, "Hey, do you want to use this burn card?" And it'll give you a temporary boost, like you move faster, or um, you get a, a more. You replace your primary weapon with a more damaging version of uh, of a different weapon, or something like that. It's basically there's like different perks or whatnot that help you temporarily, but you can only use them once. And you get the perk. You get the cards randomly, so you never know where you're gonna get it again. So it's a risk. Uh, it's 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 a uh, it's like a dual sword, a dual uh, dual dual edged sword is the analogy I'm trying to say here. Mm. Now, while I was on the topic of Titanfall, as I said, the the game I only tipped the iceberg. Um, people went through the uh, the code to see oh how many maps are there, and well, quite a bit. So here, let me count the number of maps for you. We got the two beta maps, Angel City and Fracture. Then we got Colony 3, Relic 4, Airbase 5, Boneyard 6, Corporate 7, Outpost 207. That's eight. Damn, that was going to throw me off. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Lagoon 9, Rise 10, Smuggler's Cove 11, Overlook 12, Nexus 13, 02, 14. So training ground so we got 15 maps good grief that's a lot for a, a launch game like not even call of duty even like it sports like what like 10 maps now at the most huh like it, it kills me that i feel like shooters are trying to skimp on maps so they can push it out as dlc later this is a lot of yeah. maps for content but it is an online multiplayer only game um even though, I mean, technically they say there is a story mode, but nobody really knows how it works because nobody's gotten to play it. So there's a lot of things we don't know about Titanfall, but if, if I can say anything, the multiplayer will be amazing. You will love it. And I predict we'll be seeing it in esports rather soon because it is like, I think it'd be perfect and it'd be something cool to watch. I mean, come on futuristic battle with mechs and people blowing shit up who wouldn't want to watch that i know exactly now let's move on to uh manny's current favorite developer because he's got such a hard on for final fantasy 14 <laughs> uh square has been talking recently about final fantasy 15 and people are worried that the game will be like they announced it and they're like oh it's gonna be like another 13 it won't be coming out for like three years square assures everybody that the game is very far into development and that its completion is of the highest priority whereas kingdom hearts is a lower priority just to piss other people <laughs> off <laughs> can't please them all Corey. No, you can't please them all but to be fair final fantasy 15's has been in development for, um, I don't know, like six years longer than Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> so, I don't know. I like, if I was an investor, I'd be like, you know, let's just finish this thing we've been working on for goddamn forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for those worried about Kingdom Hearts fifth, Kingdom Hearts three being delayed and whatnot, it may be, yeah. But hey, we're gonna get Final Fantasy fifteen sooner. Mm hmm. Well, just be glad it's actually coming out. Like, I remember there was a time where it's like, are they even going to do Keyblade Wars? Like, really? Oh, yeah. No, and actually, I, here's the thing. I Here's why I see Final Fantasy 15 getting more priority than Kingdom Hearts. And this is probably the biggest reason why they're being directed by the same guy. I mean, the, basically, the guy who created Kingdom Hearts, um, I believe, was it Tetsuya Nomura is his name, I think? <laughs> Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I, I'm pretty sure it's Tetsuya Nomura. Um, he is not. He was the director of uh, Final Fantasy Versus 13 back when it was that. Now he's taken over. Fit now he's still in charge, but as Final Fantasy 15. And then basically Square said, "Hey, um, we just finished negotiated paperwork with Disney after 20 years, and we can make Kingdom Hearts 3. So we need you to do that too. So I, I can see why he's like, "No, let me finish this shit." 
<laughs> yeah. Plus, the fans will appreciate it, you know, seeing another Final Fantasy game. All right. Now, next story. And finally, I think we can stop talking about Kingdoms of Amalur. Because the 38 Studio drama is going to end with a settlement bill from Rhode Island. A basically a settlement bill that promotes an out of court settlements for lawsuits involving 38 studios will be signed into law on February, February 13th. So it's already happened, which is weird because when this story came out, the shit already happened. So I love how it says will be signed into law. Great grammar there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chaffee. Chaffee? Chaffee. Signed the bill into law shortly after the House of Representatives passed the legislation. With a 53 to 16 vote, the bill will promote out-of-court settlements between 38 Studios officials and the state by protecting co-defendants if a single defendant settles with the state. In simpler terms, all other co-defendants are immune to damages sought if one defendant settles with the state. So basically, if Kurt Schilling settles, nobody else has to basically get destroyed. The immunity deal is likely... This is likely the best thing that's going to come out of here. Out of this little... I don't know, meltdown is the best way to describe what happened to 30 <laughs> um, Rhode Island Representative Karen Macbeth promoted the bill. Um, because, well, they had a $75 million debt to be uh, set and paid. Uh, but, yeah, that never happened. So... They said by defaulting on the loan, basically it would relieve the burden from taxpayers, but it would harm the state's credit uh, credit rating. So they couldn't do that. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just like, I, I'm glad that it's finally just kind of ending, and I now want them to sell it off to, like, EA or somebody it's a, so we can get Kingdoms of Ammo or the franchise back and out of the hands of the government. Ugh. <laughs> oh. Uh. Uh, and which is killing me because they tried to do an auction. I think it was last month. They have they were asking three hundred twenty grand for the entire franchise. Nobody bought. Ooh. Nobody bought. Ooh. Yeah. Corey, we should have bought it. I did buy it. Damn it! <laughs> I bought the game and I told everybody buy the game, but nobody bought the game. No, we should have bought the franchise. Been like bought the put it on our tab. Yeah, how much is that? How much of, the, of your pay is that, Manny? That's like <laughs> that's like eleven years of your pay. Good luck being a, thrown into Rhode Island service as a slave for eleven years. Yeah. Now, uh, final story of the day is uh, sadly one of our favorite studios has closed. Irrational Games is now closed, and now Cl Ken Levine is going to be opening up a new studio and it's basically one to work on smaller projects. If you don't know who Irrational Games is, they're the creators of Bioshock. So this means that we, it's not, it doesn't mean that we're not going to be getting no more Bioshock. It just means that um, the people who make the next Bioshock will not be the people who made the old Bioshock. So that means that uh, the quality of the franchise is in jeopardy, in my opinion. So, I don't know. It's I, so, it, it, I'm kind of I'm kind of bummed that th that this happened, and and, and it's all kind of it, it, all the blame is kind of going towards Ken Levine because he wanted to do different things. But at least that uh, people who are being laid off are being given other positions in studios and stuff like that. So everybody who got laid off is going to have jobs. No, nobody's losing anything. But I'm just kind of bummed that he just out of the blue. Hmm. So, do you think it'll be as bad of a transition like Infinity War to Treyarch for Call of Duty? No. No, 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 no. Not nearly that bad. And that <laughs> was, um... That, that, uh, no, no, no. It's not nearly that bad because that was really, really, really costly for Activision. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Take-Two is kind of in the opposites uh, in its spectrum. They're actually glad that this, this is happening. Because Irrational was, of course, a very, very expensive studio to, to run. Well, and well, because Bioshock Infinite was a development for a long ass time, and it, be, it was really expensive. I don't know what the actual budget of the game was, but 
it had to be pushing 130 to 150 million dollars and that's expensive for a game that only sold about five six million copies yeah which i still think bioshock should have done way better and people are stupid <laughs> that's right sheeple what i'm talking to you why did look what you did damn it look what you did to bioshock oh. i'm just kidding <laughs> I'm like, you must be talking to me too, Corey, because I never really got into that series. And yeah, you got it for free, jackass. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so bad. Now, for those worrying about the uh, the final piece of DLC, uh, episode two of Burial at Sea, that's still coming out. Um, it's just, yeah, after that, there will be nothing <laughs> Bioshock for quite some time. Huh. Yeah, and that's the end of this disc, and it's time to move on to the middle segment. And this is brought up by a story that was I thought was very interesting because it's bringing up uh, the console wars uh, again, bringing that argument back into light. And that is um, Hideo Kojima announced that uh, the Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes Edition for PS4 is the superior version because it runs at 1080p, while the Xbox One's runs at 720. Both are still run at 60 frames per second, but with the resolution difference and the remote play and probably future VR support, yeah, Metal Gear Solid's definitely going to be better on PlayStation. And here's the thing. I knew this was going to happen. I just knew this was going to happen. There was no way Sony was going to be, be like, hey, we're, we're going we're gonna to have our core franchise be on equal terms with those guys. I, I, they, I don't think they. I, I think I don't think they wanted another Final Fantasy thirteen. <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess that. I mean, I'm not saying that like Metal Gear Solid Five caused the PS4 to be more powerful, but I'm saying that this definitely worked in Sony's favor. Yes, it did. Now it brings up the topic: Is this like does resolution matter? And uh, I I wanted to say initially, yes, resolution matters, being the PC elitist I am, but I, I realized that, like, I, if I'm sitting at a computer, yes, I will notice a resolution difference, because the monitor is, like, two feet from my face. But, on a TV, which I sit further away, and um, my vision isn't too great. I actually need glasses when I play video games when I'm more than uh, seven feet away. So... <sighs> It begs the question, for someone like me and you, Manny, because I know you need glasses too, mm -hmm. does resolution ma does resolution really matter? So I really sat and thought about it, and I said, no, not really. Because there's actually, because like, I can, yes, I can tell the difference between 360 or 480 and actual HD, 720, 1080. I can really tell the difference. But the difference between 720 and 1080 Unless you have a very trained eye, it's hard to notice. The average person will not notice. Now, I can say that I've actually looked at the side-by-side -side comparison of Metal Gear Solid 5, and um, I don't know. I, I think there's more than a resolution difference because it just seems like the textures are slightly better in the PlayStation version. So I'm not sure if that is a resolution thing or not. I don't know. I'm just... And, uh, only reason I point that out is because I was looking at it and Snake's beard seemed a little, I don't know, meshy and <laughs> in Xbox One. Like, I don't know. It looked like the hairs like started to blend together. It was just kind of like a brown mass. <laughs> oh, <God>, Minecraft. <laughs> I actually... Let's, let's make a beard of coal. I, it's, but I, like I said, the... the, the uh, the, uh, the, the resolution difference really isn't as big as people would like to say it is, but I don't, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm kind of getting a kick out of people making a big deal out of it when it's not really a big deal. I mean, like here, I mean, like the, what's the only technical advantage that the PS4 has? It just has better memory. That's it. And, uh, what system of last generation had better memory? Xbox 360 and I, I just have a feeling that in the future that um, that right now like all the developers are going to be pushing the game so that the games are looking super awesome on the systems but eventually there's going to be that plateau to where they're going to have to start to dumb games down again and both systems will look the same 
It'll be 720 on PS4 at, at some point in the, in the future because some game uses some graphics engine that's fucking unreal. It's going to happen. <laughs> so, like, this whole thing is just like, oh, the PS4 is better because it's got a better resolution. Yeah, it's better for now because it's this is as far as everybody can push it. And what, but, like, it's going to happen again with, like, the 360 and PS3. That's, there's going to be that plateau, and it's going to be a complete even playing field. And the only thing that differentiates the two is the services and the games. And that's it. So you're saying Crisis 4 is just going to be unbelievable, Corey? Mm, no, I'm going to say Crisis 7 at this point. Crisis 7? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Far Cry 20. Yeah. I don't know. No. I don't know. I, I, I'm i trying to think of where to continue with this because it, I, I hate console wars now. Like, I used to be such a goddamn fanboy. And now that I look at myself, I um, I look back and say, damn, I was young and naive. God damn. <laughs> I got caught up in the marketing blitz. And Sega does what Nintendo don't. <laughs> so you know for me when it comes to picking a console i it's really strictly just the games like um that's kinda, for example that's my, when, my approach to it too mm -hmm. like when the playstation 2 first came out um i was actually thinking xbox i playstation 2 wasn't even really on my radar and then um what was it when i saw that it could do like a bunch of other things and um it had some games on it i think that were exclusive to it at the time like the bouncer and some other stuff i'm like you know what i think i'll go with that and, and later, being a playstation person i felt more comfortable with it too and then later you got awesome and then playstation 2 would become like an rpg powerhouse so yeah you would become very happy mm -hmm. even though i know you haven't really you haven't played like okay did i'm pretty sure you never played kingdom hearts Oh yeah, I did. You did? Dude. What are you talking? Really? Oh, yeah. What's this? I hear? Then why did you tell me one time that you didn't play Kingdom Hearts? Oh no, I played it. I didn't play like the remixes. Okay. Or yeah, I didn't that's play those. You, that's what you meant. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, Final Fantasy X. Mm -hmm. You never played that? Uh. I I played it a little bit like at a friend's house, but not like sat down and actually played. Star Ocean. Honest, Star Ocean, yeah, that's one I borrowed from a friend Yeah, you of mine. borrowed it. Yeah, you told me you yeah. borrowed it and you got to play it for a little bit. And then, of course, your, your parents come in and be like, yeah. does this help your schoolwork? Well, well no, <laughs> yeah. no game. <laughs> that was my dad. He's like, this isn't school-regulated homework. Yes, guys, Manny had the traditional Asian childhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes, his, my dad was Kim Jong-un. His relationship was essentially like that family guy skit. Are you a doctor yet? Dad, I'm 12. Come back when you doctor. <laughs> <laughs> eh, and that is why Manny is the hardworking guy we know today. <laughs> <laughs> no. But thanks to my buddy Corey, I can take a break every now and then. Yeah. Oh. Well, when it came to consoles for me back then, um, I pretty much grew up with just Nintendo growing up. So, like, when I... My first, like, console that wasn't anything nintendo like i never even owned a ps1 i never even owned a genesis or any of that um it was all nintendo so then my first different console was the xbox i kind of got hooked and um, i don't know it's just like it's one of those things that like i've been an xbox fan since the beginning and everything so like i feel like it's like my obligation to to like xbox but this past generation uh, I've been rather upset with how Microsoft has treated their IPs, especially with Rareware. I am still very cross with them about Rareware. Now, I, I saw what Sony had been doing, but like, I like really cool fantasy epics and stuff like that. So then when I saw that, like, that's where all the RPGs are and everything, I looked at myself and went, fuck, I bought the wrong system, didn't I? But then I told myself... <laughs> Why does there have to be this difference? Why can't I have both? Or in my case, all three, since I have to have the Nintendo systems. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like given. Like I will buy like all the Nintendo systems eventually. It just happens. Like a 3DS, didn't buy it initially. Bought it a couple years later. It's like uh, we didn't get it at launch. Got it. Got it several months later. So, um. 
I don't know. Mm -hmm. GameCube didn't come out launch. Didn't get it launched. Got it a year later. Uh, I'm going way too long with this. So I think we need we, we need we need to end this segment, man, because we're rambling pretty goddamn long, aren't we? Who's the we in this discussion? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I know I talk too much. It is time to move on to shoutouts because we have no people to do Because sadly, Tommy decided to spend the day with his girlfriend or doing debauchery either way. So my shout out. Hmm. Well, now this is rather tricky. But you know what? I'm going to just give my shout out to Funimation for having their freaking Amazon sale and I get to have Akira for cheap. How about that? Plus, Funimation's an awesome company. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. Heck, we got to meet Josh Grell and um, Lisa Tipton in um, Motaku. Oh, I met uh, Kyle Baron. He was like one of the nicest guys I ever met. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's literally just a giant middle-aged balding teddy bear <laughs> that's that's actually pretty accurate <laughs> yeah uh, uh but yes i i don't know like i've been following animation for a long time as a kid i love anime and whatnot but recently they've been surprising me they've been acquiring so many licenses recently to stuff i've never even heard of and i like watch like the new shit on Crunchyroll quite a bit too so I'm a dedicated anime fan so they license shit I've never even heard of so they're promoting so by basically promoting animes and everything I like that alone but the fact that they do it so well and then they turn around and say hey we're gonna sell some of our most high selling items for super cheap like Akira and Dragon Ball for like half off I'm like awesome so hmm. kudos to Funimation <laughs> Golly, my shout out. Um, oh, here, here's one. Uh, lately, I've been kind of on this this role of playing a bunch of um, tactic RPGs. Ones in particular were, were for the PSP. Um, there was this game called Adventures to Go. And it's kind of a goofy game, but basically you play as this almost Final Fantasy-like um, Cloud Strife character who um, basically you get to go to the center and then you decide what kind of, like, little mission you want to go on and then they throw you into the simulator and you complete the objective which is either kill the boss or you know collect materials for weapons and then once you're done you can save your game and you can either continue or you can you just close out for the day but it's a nice little pick-me-up game kind of in between you know sessions and that kind of thing so i guess on a bigger scale i just also like the concept of being able to play handheld games on the go and be able to spend however long i want on them yeah. Uh, actually, you know what? I do have a second shout out. And oh, you know I was going to say this. Uh, Log Horizon, which I've been addicted to the past couple days. Um, <laughs> if you don't know what Log Horizon is, um, it's like, here's, it's, when you think of MMO animes, you think of two things. Dot Hack, which has all the mechanics and everything is, has a cool kind of story, but it's boring as fuck. <laughs> and then you have Sword Art Online, which looks really pretty, has awesome anime scenes, but it's dumbed down as fuck. So, then in between, you got Log Horizon, which mixes, if you're an MMO fan, it has, it has like, all the mechanics and everything that make you like, oh, I know what they're talking about and shit like that. And then it has the action scenes that make you go, that kind of keep you gripped to the chair. So, I am... I don't know. I like also that the fact that there's interworking politics and some politics and MMOs. Yeah, that shit existed, but mostly ended in player killing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Plus, what's really cool, they even cover topics like, um, like the uh, what is it, like the sewing guild and the treasury guilds and all that, yeah. and like the impact impact that has on the game itself. Like you don't see that. Now, my only problem <laughs> with the entire anime is the fact that. You are, like, given no explanation as to who the characters are in real life, like, what the real life was, because they're literally just like, oh, yeah, reality swapped with the game. Yeah, that the, or how they even got there. That, and, 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 like, how the characters got there in that pretense makes, there's, like, it's there's no explanation, and it just, like, it dry kind of kills you the whole time when they, like, they talk about the outside world, and it's just like, well, how did you get here in the first place? <laughs> And, like, there doesn't seem to be an overarching goal. That bothers me. But other than that, it has, like, that interesting politics and everything and story that um, 
dot hack had but it has all that action scenes and goody animatedness that sort of online was so go watch it mm-hmm. well heck if you're gonna have a second shout out then i need one too God especially damn if it's it. gonna be anime and my shout out doggone it is gonna go to none other than infinite stratus have you seen that cory yeah yes i have isn't that the one where it's like they train girls to like pilot mechs and then like a guy joins the all girl school and it basically becomes harem of the Gundams? <laughs> <laughs> you got it, buddy. But you know what I like about this show though? Like for once, a show about mechas or mechs is actually comedic and you know, not always serious, not always dry. It's like we actually have some depth and characterization here. And I felt that was very refreshing compared to other mech series I've watched. Well, I think that's the end of a shout-out. So unless we got any more. <laughs> anyway. Let's see, Bella, do you have shout-outs? No. Oh, yes, the, the dog. Yes, dog, what do you have to say? Wolf, that is a very good shout-out. So that is the end of episode 61 of Pixels and Bits on the Overshow.com. My name is Corey. And I'm Manny. And we'll see you all next week, folks. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs>